Okay, we well, welcome back to introductory mathematical analysis A, and uh, we are going to be dealing with uh, chapter thirteen. We are going to be dealing with chapter thirteen, and we are going to start with thirteen point one. Thirteen point one. All right. So chapter thirteen uh, talked about relative extrema so the topic for chapter 13 is relative extrema relative extrema 13.1 relative extrema okay before we go into the extrema itself we're going to talk about the nature the increasing nature and the decreasing nature of a function the increasing nature and the decreasing nature of a function so how do we know a function is increasing we take two values of x x1 and x2 x1 and x2 x2 is greater than x1 or we can say x1 is less than x2 okay so if we put each of this value of x into the function so we have f of x1 and then we have f of x2 and you discover that f of x2 don't forget x2 is greater than x1 you discover that f of x2 is also greater than f of s1 then this is increasing it's an increasing function okay but on the other hand if s2 is still greater than x1 and you put it into the function you put it into the function and instead of f2 to be greater f2 is less than f of x1 then this is a decreasing function it's a decreasing function so don't forget x is increasing x2 is greater than x1 but when we put it into the function f of f2 f of x2 is also greater than f of x1 then is an increasing function but if of f of x2 which takes x that is greater is less than f of x1 then that is a decreasing function okay so this we can also call this one x1 less than x2 and we have f of x1 greater than f of x2 okay so in a graph when we trace the value of x1 to the function we discover that the value there is less than the value here that is the value this is value of f of x2 this is the value of f of x1 it's less than it right if you come to this one s3 is less than x4 but when we pick when we trace the value to the function the value of s3 the value of f of s3 is greater than the value of f of x4 okay so this is decreasing this is increasing and we can see that uh, we have a positive slope there here in increasing and then we have a negative slope in decreasing okay all right now we are going to use that knowledge to find our relative maximum relative minimum okay so when we have an increasing increasing then decreasing okay here is a relative maximum when we have decreasing and then increasing, then here is a relative minimum. Okay, please take note of that. We're going to see how to get that as we go along. All right, so we have some rules that needs to be used. Rule number one, criteria for increasing or decreasing function. F is increasing on the interval open interval a b when the derivative is greater than zero okay so how do we know if function is increasing in an interval we must find the derivative 
at that point, at the point there, and when it is greater than zero, then we say it is increasing. All right. So if it is decreasing, the derivative will be less than zero. All right, that's number one. Number two, a necessary condition for relative extrema. Okay, in order for us to find this relative extrema, we need to find our critical values. Our critical values. And to get the critical values, we find where the derivative equals to zero or where the derivative does not exist. Okay, our critical values is where the derivative equals to zero or where the derivative does not exist. So we're going to find this and then check up for this and include that in our critical values. Okay, please take note of that. Okay, rule number three. If you want to find uh, the relative extrema, then the sign must change from positive to negative to give us relative maximum. Or the sign changes from negative to positive to give us relative minimum. Okay, please take note of that. We are going to make use of that as we uh, solve some examples. All right, so now we come into first derivative test for relative extrema. We are still going to come into second derivative test. All right, for this is first derivative test. So how do we do first derivative test? The first thing is that we must find our derivative. Find our derivative. Number two is that we must find all the critical values, all the critical values. And from what we have shown before, what I've shown before, we must find why the, where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative does not exist. So we must find that. Okay, for each critical value A at which F is continuous, then we determine if it is changing. Okay, we determine the changes in the derivative. All right, for critical values A at which F is not continuous, we analyze the situation by using the definition of extrema directly, directly. All right, let's go. All right, let's take this example for you to understand the first derivative test. So what is the first thing? The first thing is to find our derivative. That is the first thing to do. Must find the derivative. Okay. Okay. Take note that this function does not exist at x equals to minus 1. So when x equals to minus 1, this function becomes undefined. All right. Please take note of that. Let's go. Now the first thing is to find the derivative. The derivative of this is what? 1 plus uh, this one can be written this way. We can write this this way. x plus 4x plus 1 minus 1. Okay. So if you write it that way, then we find the derivative. We have minus 4x plus 1 minus 2. Okay, that will be giving us 1 minus 4 over x plus 1, 2. Okay, that is our derivative. Okay, uh, the next thing is to equate the derivative to 0. Equate, we equate the derivative to 0. Okay, in order to equate the derivative to zero, I prefer to write this as a single fraction. So if I write this as a single fraction, I will be having something like this. I'm writing as a single fraction, x plus one square minus four. So I'm writing it as a single fraction. So when I write it as a single fraction, then I can equate it to zero, then I have x plus one all square minus four all over x plus 1 square equals to 0. Okay, when I equate this to 0, 
I cross multiply, then I'm going to be having x plus 1 square minus 4 equals to 0. Then I can have x square plus 2x plus 1 minus 4 equals to 0. This will be x square plus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. All right, you can use your factorization uh, on it. This is a quadratic equation. So we have x uh, plus 3, and then we have x minus 1 equals to 0. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that is fine. Okay, that means s equals to minus 3 or s equals to 1. All right, now we have our value of x, but we cannot conclude yet the critical value until we get back to the derivative and check what value of x will make this derivative not to exist, okay? It is when x equals to minus 1. When x equals to minus 1, this derivative will not exist, okay? So because of that, we have to include that in our critical value. So now we can say the critical values are minus 3, minus 1, and 1. You see, we have to include that in our critical value. So you must check up to know when the first derivative will not exist. Okay? If there is no any point, then this will just simply be your critical values. But if there are, you have to include that. Okay, from here now, we are going to make this with an interval. Use these values to divide the real line. Okay, so we have negative infinity to this to minus 3, minus 3 to minus 1, minus 1 uh, to 1, and then 1 to infinity. So I use this to divide the real line, and then I need to test if the first derivative is positive or negative in this interval. If it is positive or negative in this interval. Okay, let's have it first derivative. So pick any value in this interval. Let's say I pick minus 4. Pick any value here, minus 2. Pick any value here, 0. Pick any value here, 2. So I need to put each of them into, into the first derivative and check if they are going to be positive or negative. So if I pick minus 4 and I put it here, this will become minus 3 squared. This will become 1 minus, this will become 1 minus 4 over 9. And this is positive, okay? So because that is positive, we say this is increasing, okay? All right, let's go to this minus 2. If I put minus 2 here, going to get 1, so this will be 1 minus 4, 1 minus 4, and that will be minus 3, okay, uh, minus 2, that will be, my, yeah, minus 3, so that is uh, negative, that is negative, so I have negative, so this is decreasing. Now, here is a relative, you see, increasing, decreasing, so here is a relative, what? Relative maximum. Relative maximum at x equals to minus 3. Because that is the value of x that is common to this both interval. And this is mine. Actually, at this point is minus 3. Okay. At that point is minus 3. At this point is minus 1. At this point is 1. Okay. Now, we are going to put a value from here, 0. If I put 0 into this, if I put 0 into this, I'm going to also get negative, which shows that this is negative also. It shows that this also decreases, decreases. Okay, so that we don't have anything here because this is decreasing, this is decreasing. Now, if I put this one now, put 2 there, uh, we are supposed to get positive to show that this is increasing. So here now, we get relative minimum at x equals to 1, okay? At x equals to 1, relative minimum. At x equals to minus 3, relative maximum. 
Okay, but that is for the function, but we are using the first derivative to determine where it is increasing and decreasing. And if you get the point where it's increasing and decreasing, then there's a relative maximum there. If you get the point where it is uh, decreasing and increasing, then it's a relative minimum there. Okay, I hope you understand. Please ensure, ensure you understand. All right, that's all what we have done. And then we have our relative uh, maximum uh, at minus 3 and relative minimum at minus 1. So there are no critical value at which f is not uh, continuous. Okay. Where f is not continuous as minus 1 is not part of what we get. Don't forget that. Okay. It's not part of uh, what we have there as our relative maximum and relative minimum. Okay. Please ensure that you understand. Ensure that you understand. Thank you.